this beautiful notebook has just been released and most of the units available in the UK's Amazon got sold out within days. Why, you might be asking? Because it weighs only 1 kilo and 380 grams, has a powerful Ryzen processor, all-day battery life and charging via Type-C cable. Interested already? I bet you are! Let's get started! Hey, nice to meet you, I'm Michael, and warmest welcome to the Tech for All channel, a place where cool tech is often being inspected. When I saw the Magic Book 14 by Honor, I knew it's going to be good. And now the question is, how good exactly? As you likely know, Honor is a brand owned by Huawei, and with all the scandals surrounding the Huawei smartphones from last year, they have become more aggressive about pricing than ever. If I have to point to a brand which right now can offer the most at a given price, it would be Honor. I've recently tested their smartwatch, the Magic Watch 2, which is basically a rebranded and slightly redesigned Huawei Watch GT2, and it turned out to be great. Having said all that, you can buy the Magic Book 14, and note we talk about the 2020 edition, in selected stores across Europe, in the UK Amazon, or from the many offers in AliExpress, Geek Buying, and so on. I cannot see the device launched in the USA yet, but you can purchase with shipping to the States from various websites. Price is starting from 550 British pounds, which converts into around 650 ish dollars and sounds like too good to be true. So if you can find the unit somewhere around you and wonder whether to buy the laptop or not, keep in mind it's undercutting most of the competition by far. In fact, this laptop is almost identical to the slightly more expensive Huawei MateBook, which is enjoying the same kind of success in the last few weeks. Let's not waste any more time and check the hardware, the software, and the overall performance and experience, because I know this is what you're here for. Unboxing experience is fine, I was about to say a little boring, if it wasn't for that stunning design. Really, I would have never expected such a lovely build quality and design gets even better when we remove the protective bag, and you can notice the color accent, Honor are calling this Azure Blue Chamfer, which according to them is an effect achieved through using a crystalline diamond CNC machine. The whole unit is surrounded by this beautiful aluminium body, lifting the display up and we notice that it flexes up to 180 degrees, letting me create such good close-ups of its whole glamour, both on the front and on the back. Looking at the display, it is very good, however not too remarkable, 14 inches, only 4.8mm thin, fully laminated to reduce the reflections of light, it has passed TUF Rhineland certification to confirm the reduction of excessive blue light emissions, brightness is up to 250 nits, good colors, saturation is also at the right level, Honor have the reputation of doing pretty good calibration for their displays, and we know that because of some of their smartphones, because they have always offered fantastic fine-tuning, especially for their LCD panels. Excellent angles of view, resolution is 1080p, the keyboard is fine, ergonomic with backlight. Most remarkable part is the camera, which is under disguise. Press here and it pops out. Apparently, besides being really fun, this also is limiting factor, and while cameras inbuilt inside the display may get adjustments of the angle, this here counts on being really wide angle. Let me record a quick sample of how this camera works. Well, even in the settings, you're going to find uh, electronic stabilization. So I'm right now not using it. Let me put the laptop on the flat surface. So that's the quality of the camera and the microphone. Some of the hardware specs. Ryzen 5 processor, 8 or 16 gigs of RAM, and 256 or 512 gigabytes NVMe SSD. Graphics adapter is the embedded in the processor RX Vega 8. There's also 2.4G and 5G Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.1, two USB ports, 4-cell battery, and notice this, 3.5mm headphone jack. If you're regularly reading the news about hardware, you already have a good idea what to expect about performance. For those of you that don't care about specs, but need to know the long story short, the processor is fine, not the latest Ryzen generation, but very power efficient and with very good performance, more of a mid-range solution. 8 gigs of RAM are, in my opinion, the minimum when it comes to Windows 10, and it's great that the Magic Book surpasses a lot of the cheaper 2019 devices, which only come with 4. 
Using SSD is a must for better performance and those that are M2 based are the best option to save space and battery life and to get most out of the performance. As for the graphics, it is perhaps the weakest component of everything mentioned. Still, it is based on some of the latest AMD technologies and concerning video decoding and media playback, it's really superb. The good part is that when the Vega 8 adapter is paired with a more powerful CPU, like the one used in this magic book, it can show decent performance, despite not being separate graphics adapter. No way to compete with the high-end NVIDIA or other Vega models, but can effectively beat the older NVIDIA 950M or some of the older 600 series. Means that it will be good for some older games, but the new ones won't run too smoothly if you use the highest possible graphic settings and if your primary goal is to play games, that wouldn't work too well, especially for games that will be released this or in the next couple of years. Let's take a look into some of the software details. It arrives with pre-installed Windows 10 and the initial setup was nice and easy, took me about 5 minutes. I was expecting bloatware, but the laptop is almost bloatware free with only this special app developed for hardware monitoring mostly. It's really nice when the battery life is priority because that eliminates adding unnecessary factory software to slow down the system. The Windows is of course licensed, Home Edition, and at least on the Microsoft side, Huawei got it right. You even have Office 365 pre-installed, with no license key however, so you got about a week of free usage. The laptop is doing great when it comes to the usual daily business tasks, office work, basic editing of photos for social media, reading the news, watching videos or attending remotely school lessons. The multimedia experience is stellar, positioning of the speakers allow them to produce crisp and loud sound and it easily beats a lot of other laptop makers about this quality. The Windows 10 experience is very snappy, looks like the combination between the SSD, the CPU and the good amount of memory makes its magic and during most of the time you're gonna have the feeling it's a much more powerful computer. Some challenges will appear, however, if you switch to more resource-consuming programs and apps. I've of course tested the video and photo editing capacity. It's not bad, but this is when the CPU gets more stressed and you will start noticing the fans trying to cool it. I made some benchmarks and some tasks closer to the real life, like conversion of the same photos on my other laptop with similar processor and results were pretty good on the Magic Book. This processor can challenge the Core i5 Generation 8 series by Intel. For video production, yeah, you may use it with some restrictions and a lot of software rendering, but it can be fine for some not too intensive 1080p edits. You can watch movies in 4K format, of course, but then the monitor is gonna be the limiting factor because it's 1080p only. No worries, through the HDMI port you can connect to your TV or another monitor. Gaming was also okay. To conclude our game testing, we can say that the Ryzen 5 3500U with Vega 8 is going to let you play older games fairly well. You will be able to either raise the game settings to medium or high details at 720p or keep them at low settings at 900p or 1080p. As stated earlier, most 2020 games with demanding graphics won't run that well. Also, adding extra peripherals is easy, as long as you count on the USB ports, we have two of them, but they seem to be enough. Pity there's no card reader, I anyways carry one with me all the time. Battery life is very good, you can get almost a full business day on battery, especially if the screen brightness is a little lowered. The laptop is very, very capable, and for the price tag, it's quite a steal. We always have to sacrifice something with laptops, either size or battery life or performance or design, while none of these are the absolute top. With the Honor Magic Book, they all are at an excellent level and I cannot stop thinking about how many good features Honor have packed into this one. As usual for laptops, upgrades here are quite limited, so keep in mind that if you want to swap the RAM or the SSD drive, you have to remove the whole bottom cover. People often say that you get what you pay for. In the case of 2020's Honor Magic Book 14, you get really great value and most similar configuration will cost you one or two hundred bucks more. There's no magic, just good planning, decent engineering and top-notch design combined with aggressive marketing. Well done, Honor! And keep that pace for the future projects as well. 
Funny enough, you get such a fantastic computer for way less money than most 2020 smartphone flagships. Crazy, right? That's been it for our little adventure today. I very much hope you enjoyed it. Head over to the description and find a link to the Honor Magic Book 14. And please support the channel. Every little thing you do means a lot to me. So don't be shy. Take a second to hit the like and say hi in the comments. Or even better, subscribe to follow our next cool tech inspections. I'm Michael. It's been an honor to have you around for the last few minutes. And see you next time.